All right, I had to work without the camera for a couple hours, but this is as far as I got. I'm gonna run the pipes up the back of the sissy bar like that. Eric's working on his drift car. So rear header's gonna come around, drop down. They're gonna both meet up and then come up the back, and then I'll probably slash cut them at the top. Front's gonna come right down under it. I haven't hooked that up yet. And I just got these pieces made. So I went down to the muffler shop and had him flare these for me. So on the bottom, where it connects in here, I'll run a coupler or one of the slip overs right in here. So you can still pull the pipe off without uh, making it a nightmare. So I went a little crazier with the pipes than I was planning on. I think they'll look pretty good though. The front one goes right under the bike. Pulls out like that. The rear is pretty uh, self-explanatory there. Then right up the back. I've got a little fitment issue here. This top pipe doesn't line up perfectly straight with the lower, so I need to adjust that a little bit. I think I'll have to cut this weld up here. Now I tweaked it. They'll still sit up about another inch too. So once they're on, they'll be about that tight of a sissy bar. See if they'll hold there. I think I'm gonna take a extra tube too and just go right up to the top of the seat. If we're gonna do them crazy, we may as well go all out. Yeah, so this is where we're at. I gotta make mounts and uh, all that fun stuff for them. But uh, I'm gonna cut the top tube right now and get it to line up with the bottom one. All right, so I just got the rear header straight with the front one. I just tacked on these little pieces of steel to hold them straight. 
see they flow good. Put uh, extensions on the rear. I'm gonna cut those down, but I'm just was curious to see how it look. Probably end up cutting them right here. Maybe do slash cuts or something. But yeah, so now I'm gonna work on the mounts and uh, we'll weld it and grind it back down. Just got all the exhaust mounts done. It's hard for me to film some of this stuff because uh, it would just be hours of time lapse of sitting and playing with it. But uh, I got one mount right down there to hold the front pipe. I got one more there for the top and there's one more on the bottom for the lower pipe. And then back here, I uh, just ran both of them together to keep them square. Then I took the big blast pipes off. It's too much for this bike. So I'm gonna just cut them like that. Little shark things. But yeah, so now it's time to uh, pull it off and fully weld it. I don't know if I'm gonna TIG weld it. I'd rather MIG it, but I don't have a MIG here, so I may end up just uh, taking everything tonight and then tomorrow I can sand it all down and get it, get it smooth. Editing some of the videos, I noticed uh, I lost some, uh, some of the files that I did, so I just wanted to go over a few things. On the King and Queen, what I did is uh, put these little nuts through the back just to hold it. I did three, it is so long. Then I... Uh, through these little L brackets in the corners. And uh, I don't think I got a finished uh, shot of it. But there it is. See from the back, we just, I was gonna do the designs with some uh, round stock in there, but just the little mounting tabs look kinda cool. So before I start doing the foam, I'm just checking this. I'm gonna grind down a little more here. I didn't get a perfect cut. You can see it's a little, mm, a little sharper right here than on this side. So I'm just gonna smooth that out and then uh, we'll start doing the foam. A lot of people do these uh, hardtail seats and use a, a normal like car upholstery foam and it's just way too soft, so I get this uh, two inch rebond foam. I'll end up cutting it down to maybe an inch. Um, but this stuff's super stiff, and it kind of helps your tailbone when you hit a big bump. So I'll use this rebond foam, and then once I take it to the polster, um, I'll have him put a thin layer of the more spongy car upholstery foam right on the top, and that'll uh, take any hard lines away that I don't cut perfect. and let him get a good uh, good shape on it. All right, so seat salt prep. Um, I'm gonna use this Gorilla Spray adhesive. I'm gonna just uh, cut out pieces of this that are close. Uh, that's gonna need an hour or two of shaving either way, so I'm gonna cut out pieces of this that are close. I'm gonna do one piece here, one piece here, one piece here, and one up the top. And I'm getting uh, getting low on this foam, so I'm gonna have to be a little careful on how I use it. But to start, I'm gonna just spray this on, let it get uh, super tacky. So I just uh, spray glued this, uh, this foam onto the seat. It was always just a major pain in the ass. Um, this is the last time I get out of this foam though. It's real expensive so I have to order some more. I did use this Gorilla stuff this time and it's not very good. If you're going to do it, just go get the 
the normal 3M. The 3M uh, spray adhesive is by far the best. But yeah, so we got all this on now. I'm gonna uh, take the pipes off and let that dry. And I'm gonna go over to my neighbor's shop and MIG weld them real quick. And then we'll come back and we'll start, uh, start shaping the seat. Just got back from the neighbors, migged all the pipes up. Figured it'd save me a lot of time, but now that I did them, I'm gonna have so much extra grinding work to do. I probably should have uh, just done what I usually do and tigged them. But now I'm gonna start uh, sculpting the seat here. I'm gonna take just a saw saw with a fine blade on it and uh, start getting into what we're looking for. Just cut a rough shape into it. I don't know why this side over here cut terribly. Everything else cut fine though. So we got a rough shape, went around the seat pan. Um, now what I'm gonna do is uh, take a marker and just draw a line on where I want extra foam, where I don't, and uh, kind of brush everything up. I'll have to add a little, a little extra in here where I chopped it out. This rebond foam is a pain in the butt to work with though, so. Seat carving's all done. See, now it fits the bike. So it's nice and skinny on the backrest. I don't want a lot of foam back there. It looks funny. And then uh, shaved it in for the passenger. Nice little, uh, nice little area for the cooter. And uh, up here for me, I shaved it down probably a good inch, inch and a half. And all I'm doing is just getting a really uh, rough mold of it. And then uh, when I send it to the upholster, he can uh, get the fine tuning on it. But just it's easier for me to give him something so he knows what I'm looking for. See it over there. Yeah, so that's a wrap on the seat. And now we're going to clean up because this stuff just makes the biggest mess ever and then uh, start working on some mounts. Made a quick list of uh, what I need to do to finish this and really I'm pretty close. Got uh, everything written up here. So the guy who made the frame didn't do a fifth transmission mount so I'm gonna make a fifth mount. Take this piece that's already open, mill it out for a 3 8 hole and uh, widen it a little more. And then uh, oil tank spacers, oil tank support for the rear, because I'm not gonna run it into the fender how people usually do it. Then uh, make the motor mount, make the plate for the underside of the tank here to fill it in so it doesn't look funny, because that just looks way too open to me. And then, uh, what else we got? Threaded rod for the seat, license plate and the tail light bracket. Um, front axle, I need to make a front axle and the spacers. Make the handlebars this weekend. Um, yeah, everything else is pretty quick stuff. Just a little checklist, so I'm gonna go in. Uh, I'm out of its bung, so I'm gonna take this and lay it into a couple pieces and then uh, I'll use this here for the top motor mount, the 916 round bar. I'll just lay then something that looks cooler into it. Yeah, so we'll get moving on that and go over into the machining room.
just finished uh, making all these little pieces here on the lathe. So here's the part that I opened up on the mill for the fifth uh, transmission hole. It's three eighths hole now. I slotted it so there's a little more movement. Should be good enough. Then uh, these little pieces here. Just made a couple little flute looking rib. I don't even know what to call them. I'm going to use uh, one of these for the rear uh, lower fender mount. I don't know where I'm going to put it yet, but I'll use one of them there. And then I'll use uh, two of them up here. I made these two, three of these little half inch spacers. So, be for the motor mount. Motor mount, I got one more that I made for the top mount right there. So what I'll do is drill the hole in the top here and then I'll take these and heat them up and bend them into something cool or maybe uh, I could even take it like this and put a couple more ribs in this end here and just run one hooking into it. I'm not sure yet. Just had to go uh, pick up this uh, ingenious little uh, <laughs> thing my buddy made here. So uh, I need to grind down all the welds on the pipe so they're smooth. And my buddy made this little MacGyver here. It's got a little spring tensioner. Right there out of a little piece of steel and an aluminum plate. So pretty much you can press it down around the pipe and get a perfect, uh, perfect finish right off the bat. So I'm going to get this out of the way right now because it's my least favorite thing to do. Just took a quick break. I can't can't open my hand anymore from holding that grinder. So see what I did, I just ground them all smooth side to side. Then I'll come in with this one and hit it this way and get them perfectly smooth. This is by far my least favorite thing to do. Just covered in about five pounds of dust. Take a fiver and then we'll get back at it. Okay, just uh, finished grinding these. This uh, that flex uh, one really works super, super good for all the joints. I always figure if uh, if I can save the chrome or some work, I'll get a better deal. So if I can get these chrome for 150 bucks or 100 bucks, I'll be pretty happy instead of them charging me, you know, 300 to do all the prep work. But let me get a little one. 
see like right there on the neck there were two full seams there. I've got a couple little spots here and there that I need to fill and then come back around and uh, grind one more time. But uh, yeah, they're pretty close. My beer's warm now because it took me like uh, probably an hour and a half to do these. It's just complete pain in the ass. But uh, if I can save some money, I'd rather spend my Friday night doing this. So yeah, I'm gonna tack weld them up real quick. I'm gonna mark any spots, tack weld them, and then uh, give it that final grind on the spots I refinish, and then I will send them off to polish and chrome. Just wrapping it up for the night. Pipes are completely done. I wasn't gonna go with the big up sweeps, but I just, I don't know. Maybe it's the beer. Couldn't help myself. So there we are, big ol' up sweeps. They look pretty crazy though. So yeah, you can see again that weird little belt sander thing my buddy makes. That little tool over there. I mean, it gives you a really, really good finish to send it straight off to chrome. Usually when you flap disc them, it's just, uh, just really inconsistent. So yeah, it looks like if I'm gonna run these, I need to make one more bracket tomorrow. It's gonna come uh, somewhere in this area, maybe up here, I don't know. Figured out then, but uh, it's a wrap for tonight. It's things like, uh, I don't know, one or two in the morning now. So, uh, yeah, we'll get this thing finished up uh, hopefully tomorrow. So, all the fab work's done. I can send it out to Chrome. And then uh, I'll start working on the Bondo. Back at it again today. So, Hopefully today's the last day of uh, any fab work type stuff and then I'm done making parts. Then we can just go into like one more day of full mock-up and uh, assembly stuff. I think I might have a little problem here. Probably have to squish this pipe in where the lever comes out for the mechanical brake. But besides that, uh, Everything should be pretty pretty good to go. Alright, here's the new piece I just came up with. Just let it focus. It's the same thing, it's just, it's really easy for me to make uh, ribs like this. What can you see it on? There you go. So I'm going to take this piece, mark the center, and bend it in a V for this uh, top mount here and I don't even know if I'm gonna like it. I, I have a feeling I'm gonna go back to the software. Um, I don't know, we'll give it a try.
made a stupid mistake on this. So I just spent all that time making it and uh, completely forgot that when you pull it up, it has to get wider. So obviously that is no longer going to work, even though I was really starting to like the look of it. Um, so I'm going to sit here and figure out another way to do it. But yeah, obviously that's not going to happen. Oh, I got the motor on the work. I had to put it back in the middle and oblong the holes and kind of paint mask. If I don't like it later on, I'll change it. You can see how much wiggle there is now. But, uh, there you go. It's tight, but fits. So, I'm going to get two bolts, lock these down a little bit, and then I'm going to bend the top one into here, and uh, we'll be done with the motor mount. All right, so here's our little piece. So it's a little fish hook. Go right there. Look pretty cool. All right, I had to stop filming for a little while. My dad came by and brought some beer. So I ended up uh, drinking a little bit with him. But uh, here's where we left off. I got. Uh, I got the fifth uh, mount for the transmission in right there. Down on the bottom, that's all set and ready to go. I got the uh, rear fender mount in. I went with the little groove mount. So I guess we'll just do that as a little theme thing. Put those pieces everywhere. I uh, tacked in the bottom of the tank. Started sealing in the tunnel there. We can get it to, there you go. You know, and a lot of this stuff is it's so hard doing with one person. Like, trying to tack that piece and hold pressure on it to keep it square, it's just super hard. If you have a friend or something to help you out with some of this, it makes it a lot easier. Um, motor mount's done. I guess you can see the, uh, the mount from back here for the fender. Then I also got the bushings made for right here on the oil tank. Let me show you on the other side. So this one's got the bushing under there. The problem now is, even with that, um, I can't make them any higher because it'll hit the coil mount on the other side. And this gap is completely not right. So I needed to sit more uh, more in that range, but if I run it like that, then I'm gonna end up breaking the mounts on the plate. So I'm gonna have to cut these uh, these little spacers I made down at like a 20 or 30 degree angle to hold it a little off, and then I'll make another mount for the back of the oil tank. But uh, it's super close now, it's in the home stretch, that's for sure. Almost ready to take everything apart and finish weld it. starting to look like a bike. I'll get the bars done tomorrow. I wasn't able to use my buddy's bender today, so. Yeah, I'd say probably, uh, I don't know, one more full day on this bike, and then uh, break it down, finish everything, and then go into Bondo. Tank looks so much better sealed in from the bottom, though.
It actually looks like it flows on the bike now. So yeah, that'll be it for this episode. And then uh, I guess the next one's gonna be pretty much uh, finishing everything up.